part of groups loops for me is uh, demoing to you guys this particular shoe thing and that's where I this is the demo I created um, a while ago and it's the one I think is most significant let's turn uh, only Y floor on because that just confused me and uh, focal shift alright so I'm gonna enter into a demo so just watch what I'm doing I'm gonna try to be as quick as I can it's not gonna be pretty but you'll see the the basics of where groups loops was coming from and that'll really set us up for later uh, and the the whole tutorial for this uh, you can see on the uh, on the atelier uh, and on the hub I'll see if I can make sure that's available I'm gonna I'm gonna create a shoe but I'm not gonna create a shoe with a normal I'm creating it with symmetry on later on I'll turn symmetry off and then adjust it see how fast that was but I don't want to do that in the beginning because things you know things don't go well that way okay let's just extend this a little bit and I'm going to turn that off and in fact let's Make sure this stuff gets masked. Trim. So I'm going to come in here, not trim, but clip. And that's the wrong way. And that's not even what we want to do. We want to just kind of pull out a little bit. Okay. There's several things I am not doing here, but I do want at least a little bit of a shape. Okay, so we can mask this off, and I can do that by, oh, I'm not going to mask it, so I'm going to create a group. So I can say group masked. And the purpose of me creating this mask is that I'll be able to, say, click and move that down. So that's really not that nice because the edge loops are not nice. So this is when I might come in and use, uh, say, e groups loops. Where'd it go? Edge loop, groups loops. But I'm not quite done yet. Um, but let me just introduce one advancement since we're getting to the end. The one most significant advancement is this guy, edge loop masked border. Okay, and in fact, um, but the problem with that, of course, is you can't have subdivision levels. So we can say, all right, well, that's fine, edge loop masked borders. And now, let's turn um, mask by polygroups off for now. Now you can see that's pretty clean edge that we get in there not the best because it's only one masked edge it's not group loop groups loops but it's close okay I'm gonna undo that and let's just say for now since this is only really focused on polygroups we're gonna say group masked and then let's create the the rim I'm going to say group masked get this guy but I don't want to affect this one so I'll just hide that group masked and this group mask now works with visibility so that's pretty cool same thing here I'm going to just hide this piece group masked okay cool so I'm not screwing up any of these edge loops I already had uh, and in fact let's add all of these guys and how would I make all of this one so I didn't have to deal with this extra border 
You guys saw me do this earlier, but think for two seconds. How am I going to make this one subtool and or one polygroup and this one polygroup? These are the kind of tricks that make a difference. Auto groups. So is it wrong to change the base group? No. You know, remember these are your these groups are yours. They're yours to mess with, to adjust, and all of that. Uh, let's say we want to put a Nike swish in here. Okay, we're going to say group masked. Now we've got a little bit of a Nike swish. Uh, I don't have my pol my tennis shoes on right now, um, but there should be some sort of beginning. Okay, that's all masked out, and let's see if we can create just a straight line down. But we're only going to do it along here, so we hide it and we say group masked. We've got some ingredients, but we also need to really focus on this guy here. Get that heel. And I only want to do this with the heel, so I'm going to say uh, group masked. And anything else. This is a real basic layout. I think um, we could probably also have a tack right there and uh, group masked. Okay. All right. So this is a basic setup that was intended for groups loops. This is exactly the basic setup. What you would do is you would paint poly groups. What happened is people did not paint poly groups. They're like, what? Why? I'm painting a what? You want me to do what? Just converting a mask to a polygroup is, is confusing. Because if you're from a Maya background, you don't, you know, you make a selection. A selection is a group of vertices. But here now, suddenly, your selection is RGB, mask, visibility, as in a selection of vertices, and all these things. It gets more complicated. Okay, but the, the most important thing is the circularity. Mask to group to now topology. One, two, three. Bada bing. Groups, loops, we're going to set this to two. And we're going to leave this at pretty much normal. We're going to allow triangles. And voila. Nothing's changed here in any major way. But suddenly we got some really cool polygroups to help us. So how do we use these? I mean, even that swoosh is looking nice. So this is when we come in with move or other brushes and we say mask polygroup and let's just select this blue and eh, it's not gonna work that well. Let's come in here or do it this way. Move click and look at that shift and move it out or you can do that right click thing where you right click and inflate it okay kinda works kinda doesn't but I'm just gonna pull that out I'm gonna click here and push that in that's the tongue these guys really this gets inflated and uh, I'm going to click it out that way, so right click. Yeah, that's a nice inflation. Um, this guy can go down. Yeah, that whole thing could go down, I think. Or if you did it here. Yeah. Uh, and this, this whole guy definitely inflates. And this guy just goes down. 
Okay, there's some adjustments. For example, this tongue isn't actually accurate. You know, we have to manually sculpt that or we would have to do the groups different. But let's turn polyframe off. And we're starting to have a shoe. Hachoo! Starting to have a shoe. Steel toe shoe from the 50s.